Hello, this is Graham Brown from Upschool, bringing you another book to help you become a better entrepreneur. And if you like these book reviews, if you're passionate like me about books, then go and check out upschoolbookreviews.com slash course, where I provide a free course for you, five of my top picks, business books, which will help you become a better entrepreneur. I review the books so you don't have to read them. And if you have read them, then, you know, review them along with me and get more out of the books, which I think are five of the best to help you grow your business. Today, I'm going to talk about Virtual Freedom by Chris Ducker. Now, this book bills itself as how to work with virtual staff to buy more time, become more productive and build your dream business. So what's the problem? Well, let's get to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is we're just too damn busy. And this is something which has been addressed in some of the other books reviews that I've done. So Essentialism by Greg McKeown is one. The Four Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss is another. We are just too damn busy. And one of the reasons is, is because, you know, our work demands it. The nature of our work, we end up taking on a lot of stuff on our plate. And the other reason is, is, this syndrome which Chris Ducker identifies called the superhero CEO syndrome, which is this belief that, you know, we entrepreneurs are control freaks. Let's face facts. We're control freaks. We like to do things ourselves because we trust ourselves more than anybody else. And we think we're pretty damn good at doing things. So we have this attitude that if anything's worth doing properly, we've got to do it ourselves. So pretty much most of the business runs through us as a bottleneck. And what happens is, is that we end up becoming super stressed, super busy. And we have difficulty outsourcing this stuff because, you know, we have this attitude. Well, you know, it takes me time to teach that person how to do the task. I might as well just do it myself. So that's the superhero CEO syndrome. And if you go back to the other book reviews that I've done, like Essentialism by Greg McKeown and even The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, the core to growth as an entrepreneur, especially a lifestyle entrepreneur where your resources are limited often just to one person and an outsourced team, is saying no. You have to say no to grow. And that basically means you have to identify things within your business which you believe are not the best use of your time and say no to these things and outsource them. And actually, if you go to Tim Ferriss's four-hour workweek review, before outsourcing, Tim Ferriss suggests the best thing is to delete the task. A lot of tasks which are outsourced can be better off just deleted, even though they add a little bit of value. The value is incremental. So if you are going to outsource, how do you do it? This brings in the book Virtual Freedom by Chris Ducker. Now, Chris Ducker was based in the Philippines and he was running an outsourced call center, I think, originally. And that developed into an outsourced consultancy helping businesses outsource their needs. Around about 2000, 2007, 2008, the virtual assistant revolution started. And this was really started by Tim Ferriss's four hour work week, where he talked about this whole idea of hiring VAs to outsource your life. And in the section, if you look, go back to the Tim Ferriss four hour work week review, the acronym he uses is D-E-A-L, deal, define, eliminate, automate, liberate. So the eliminate and automate part of building a lifestyle business is really about outsourcing automating your business, putting it on income autopilot and outsourcing it to assistants. So around about 2007, 2008, Chris Ducker became overwhelmed with all this sudden interest. This floodgate was opened of entrepreneurs, lifestyle entrepreneurs particularly, interested in virtual assistants and how to leverage this new resource. So what they were doing is they were going to people like Chris Ducker, they were going to websites back then like Odesk, which is now part of Upwork. And they were hiring virtual assistants. And this was all part of this idea of becoming the new rich, which Tim Ferriss talked about, which is, you know, escape the line to five, live anywhere and join the new rich. And this idea of outsourcing your life excited a lot of people because they thought that if they could create this system up front, this pipeline, 
then they could simply sit back and let the money roll in. But the reality was that that was really the case. Most of what was outsourced in those early days was more or less an experiment and it didn't work. I saw a lot of really bad examples of outsourcing and I'll talk about those in a minute. So there is a science to outsourcing and I want to talk about that. You know, what is the science of outsourcing? What do you need to do to make outsourcing work effectively? Because it's very easy to outsource hire virtual assistants and end up worse off. The worst situation is where you hire a virtual assistant and your virtual assistant finishes all the tasks that you set for her and she comes back and says, what do I do now? And you find some more tasks just to keep her busy. That's the worst situation. That's a very dangerous situation to be in because now what's happening is you're both paying money for an outsourced worker who is doing the tasks that you were once doing so maybe not doing them as well and now she's coming back to you and saying um, I want you to tell me what to do so now she is setting your agenda and that's the worst of both worlds you're both outsourcing your work to a lower value worker and you are losing your time you're having your time set by somebody else so that's the worst of both worlds and that happens in a lot of situations and you can avoid that with what i call the just in time model for outsourcing and i'll talk about that in a minute so let's start at the top how do you make virtual freedom work well you got to understand 80 20 80 20 is very simple when it comes to your business is what are the tasks that take up 20% of your time, but produce 80% of your results? What are the tasks that take up 20% of your time that produce 80% of your results? Now, these ratios might be more like 10-90, but let's stick with 80-20. So 20% produces 80%. So one day, effectively a week of your five days, creates most of the value in that week. What are those tasks? One way of doing this is to divide a piece of paper into half and on the one hand side, left hand side, write down all your tasks. And on the right hand side, write down all your results and work out from your tasks, which are the tasks, which are the things that you do that produce the results. So it could be, for example, that one meeting that you had that produced most of the value during the week. And you can list in there, you know, updating Twitter, updating your social media feeds, blog posts, um, cleaning the office, whatever. And you'll find 80-20 is almost unavoidable. You'll find that if you had 10 tasks in there, then two of those tasks are gonna be your high value tasks. So it could be that meeting, that presentation that you did, And then eight of those tasks will be low value tasks. So the key is, what do you do with your business to structure it in such a way that you can spend more time on the high value stuff and less time on the low value stuff and outsourcing is a key part of it. The first step, which should be, can I get rid of this entirely? So you look at those eight low value tasks, the 80%, and you say, can I delete these? And if you can't delete them, can I automate them? And if I can't automate them, can I outsource them? So outsourcing really should be the last option rather than the the default option. So can I outsource this 80%? And that's how you assign tasks to a virtual assistant. That's where you that should be the starting point. So here's the list of things that I need done on a regular basis, which are low value, and I shouldn't be spending my time on them. And if I outsource them to this assistant, what that does is free up my time to focus on the 20%. So I effectively, the goal is to spend 100% of your time on the 20%. That is how you grow as a business, because you're saying no to the 80%, the low value tasks which are holding you back. Now really outsourcing is simple. But more than being simple, it's about avoiding 
the big mistakes. So let's talk about the big mistakes that people make when they outsource. And if you can avoid these, you can outsource effectively. So the first one is being the virtual vulture. Now, the virtual vulture is somebody who hovers over the virtual assistant and micromanages the process. And if you go back to the old iterations of ODES, the platform where you could hire virtual assistants from the Philippines, as well as other countries in the world, of course, they used to have a service within that where you could uh, just get screenshots of the person that was working for you. So you'd have a screenshot, like it would be like every minute or every six minutes and you can monitor what they were doing. And you might think, well, this makes sense because, you know, I'm paying for their time and I can see what they're doing. But the problem with that is not necessarily you micromanaging their time and making sure they're getting things done properly. The problem is your use of time. You shouldn't be spending your time managing a low value worker. You should be spending your time on the 20%. So if you're spending your time micromanaging somebody doing the low value tasks, you're again, it's worst of both worlds. Better than that, it's better to assign tasks and objectives and outcomes and say, right, what I want you to do is I want you to take this audio MP3 file, clean it up, post it, create this blog post and tell me when you're finished or if you have any problems, contact me. Other than that, we're done, we're good. So assign tasks. Now, to do that, it's worth knowing a couple of things. Firstly, you should really have experience of doing that task yourself first. It's so much better if you outsource a task which you have been doing yourself and you understand the process and simply can hand that process over to a virtual assistant. You know how it works. If you have to think the task from scratch, that's very difficult. It's a very different situation. And that is prone to go wrong because you have to work through the task and you spend a lot of time doing that and that's time of yours rather than the time of the assistants. That can work with a very proactive virtual assistant. I'll talk about that in a minute. But for the most part, it's better if you outsource a task which you have already been doing regularly and you can simply hand it over. The second thing is finding an assistant that is proactive. It's much better and it's worth paying a lot more for an assistant who you can simply hand a task objective to and they can work out the details. Now, those kind of virtual assistants are very valuable. They're worth paying a lot more because not only will they do the task and work out how to do it because they have experience and they're proactive and they're not afraid of making a few mistakes or asking, but they will also often go over expectations and say, oh, I did this and I also did this for you just in case. So those are really the kind of virtual assistants you want to be working with. And those kind of virtual assistants, the kind of virtual assistants you're really looking for are people who have a lot of experience so look at, when you go to Upwork, look at how many hours they've completed, how many tasks they've completed successfully. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for new virtual assistants because you have to train them. And, you know, you're not training staff who are going to stick with your business long term. So really, you know, that's a high risk investment that that person will stay with you and that investment will pay off. And I also look for virtual assistants who have multiple clients on the go. Now, why is that? If you were to have a look at the the profile of a virtual assistant, quite often it's easy to look at profile and say, oh, they've got five clients on the go. I'm just like another client. I'm going to be like shunted to the back of the priority queue. And, you know, they're going to be doing other stuff whilst I'm paying them to do my stuff. I'm bankrolling their other projects. That often isn't the case. That can happen. But if you have a virtual assistant with many clients on the go. A, it means they're set up to do this, which is great. B, it means often they have experience. And C, it means they can work in a just-in-time model, which is where you say to them, look, you only work on my stuff when there is stuff. I'm not going to say to you, right, 10 hours a week, I want you to work me 10 hours a week and that's it. 
I want you to look at the inbox of tasks and only work for me whilst there's stuff in the inbox. If there's nothing in the inbox, go and work for your other clients. That's fine. So that's the best situation to be in. And also it avoids the virtual vulture scenario because you can't hawk them doing this stuff because they're going to be doing other stuff as well. So it makes sense that you outsource stuff to them, which is not necessarily time specific. You're outsourcing tasks which you know, aren't time critical, need to be done today but things that need to be done in the next couple of days, air quotes. You know, there's a bit more flexibility in the schedule. Let's move on. One of the other mistakes that virtual assistants can encourage and outsourcing um, can encourage, and this it really goes back to the beginning, early days, 2000, 2007, 2008, with Tim Ferriss and the 4-Hour Workweek, and this whole idea of outsourcing just because you can. Now, Tim Ferriss says before you outsource, you should look at deleting the task. If you can't delete it, outsource, uh, sorry, automate the task. If you can't automate the task, outsource it. But what should you outsource? So there was a whole movement early on, and this was something that grew on Tim Ferriss's four hour workweek blog this idea of using concierges from credit cards. So if you have a platinum credit card, a visa card, you get a concierge service with that. So you can phone them up and give them all kinds of silly tasks. Like the obvious stuff is like, hey, look, you know, I'm, I've am i got a meeting. Can you reserve a table at this restaurant for this meeting at this time? That's obvious. I mean, that's where it works because what they will do is the concierge will then phone up that restaurant and make a booking and they'll also pay for it with your credit card. So that makes sense. Then there's a whole bunch of stupid stuff which emerged from the forum, which was just because you can, which was, you know, phone up the the credit card concierge and ask them to um, tell you, you know, give you a list of all the kings and queens of England since the 13th century. Or, you know, um, do some research on pizza. I don't know. I'm just using crazy examples, but there really were crazy examples like that. And it was a bit of fun. And it was a challenge in itself, and that was appealing to entrepreneurs. But I think a lot of entrepreneurs uh, made the mistake of thinking that or associating just because you can with actually the real reason why you should be outsourcing. So, you know, this stuff is just a waste of time, and it's just a game that doing that kind of outsourcing just because you can. Because the problem is with that is, okay, fine, you might say, well, it doesn't take me any time. Well, it does, because you have a bit of space in your head, which you've created, which you've set aside, which is specifically for this task, not just in creating the task, but also dealing with the task when it comes back to you. Plus, you actually have to deal with the results. So when that person, that concierge comes back to you with the results, you have to deal with it. So it's time. It's a waste of your time. If that stuff is not mission critical to your business, if it's not stuff that you can outsource, it's just wasting your time. Yes, it's a bit of fun, but it's not part of your business. So avoid the just because you can. The third mistake, and I've talked about this earlier, is keeping your VA busy. Now, this happens when you have a situation where you hire a virtual assistant for a set amount of hours, and then Let's say you hire them for 10 hours and they've done five and they come back and say, what else do I do? As I said before, this is uh, the worst of both worlds. So how do you avoid this? The best way to work is to work in a just-in-time model. And the way that you can do this is when you hire the VA and you should interview your VAs, you should set the expectations early on. You should say to them, hey, look, you know, it's going to be between five and 15 hours a week. Do you have that kind of capacity? And they should say yes, if they've got multiple clients on the go. Five to 15 hours a week could be zero some weeks. You know, I could be busy. I could be traveling and not be able to set any tasks to you. But here's some regular tasks that I want you to do. And on top of that, I'm going to throw in some extra tasks on a regular basis. Can you do that? They should say yes. And I want you to bill me accordingly. You know, if there's no business, there's nothing in the task inbox, don't bill me. If there's 15 hours, bill me 15 hours. That's how it works. Now, that works really well because you just assign what you need done at that particular time and they're not looking at you as a meal ticket and saying, right, you know, I need to get my 15 hours this week. And at the same time, from your perspective, you're not coming back to them and saying, look, here is the task that I'm going to give you to fill up that 15 hours during the week. So you have that just-in-time model, and that works really well. 
So that's the third mistake, is keeping your VA busy because you've paid for them, you feel that you need to get your money's worth. Okay, so let's have a look at the last mistake that entrepreneurs make when outsourcing. And that's outsourcing their 20%. And I've seen this done, this is cringeworthy stuff. It's where they outsource the 20% that produces the most value. So this whole idea of outsource your life, I think is misleading. Because you shouldn't outsource your life. Because if you outsource your life, you'll have nothing to do and you'll also damage your business. Because there's something that you need to do as an entrepreneur that creates value that can't be outsourced, that can't be automated, that can't be deleted. And that's the stuff that you need to do. So what is that 20%? So it could be meeting somebody in person, it could be a face-to-face presentation, it could be sending an email, a personalized email, it could be making a phone call, whatever it is, it could be making a video. It's something that only you can do because it has your brand on it and that brand is you. The worst thing that you can do as an entrepreneur is to outsource that. If that's what people expect from you, don't outsource it. And I've seen this. I've seen people outsource uh, emails that, you know, one point they were dealing with you directly and the next thing this virtual assistant steps in and takes over the relationship. Now, there's a big difference of doing this right and doing this wrong. And doing this right is where the virtual assistant supports that relationship. So the customer still has a relationship with you and the virtual assistant supports it. So she will manage that process and make sure things keep ticking over and following up for information and so on. The worst situation is where you step out of the loop and the virtual assistant steps in. That's a really bad situation to be in because now the customer thinks, well, hang on a minute, I was dealing with you and now suddenly this person I don't know has stepped in and I'm dealing with them. I don't want that. It's okay. If you have a transactional business when people are just buying stuff from you, fine. But if you have a a business where your face is in that business and they have a relationship with you, you should never outsource that relationship. So it's really important that you maintain and ring fence that 20% and don't outsource it. As I said, the virtual assistant can support it. A good example of that being, let's say you're going for a meeting with a customer or you are having a telephone meeting with a, with a customer, then you are going to have that telephone call with the customer or the prospect as it may be at the time. You can't outsource that to a virtual assistant, even though that is possible physically. What the virtual assistant can do, can su- she can support that. She can contact the prospect and set up a time for that and make it happen. But the actual meeting itself is done by you. So that's where the virtual assistant can support your 20%, but never replace it. And it's the same with, for example, like content writing. So if you're producing content like blog posts, if it's really important that your brand is on that blog post, then you should never outsource it. What you can do, however, is you can outsource the production of the post to the virtual assistant. So you could create the content, you could give it to your VA, your VA could then put that into a WordPress blog post and set it up, put all the images in there, put all the links in there, schedule it and so on. Because that stuff takes time. And it also detracts from your focus of focusing on that 20%. That is where you can use virtual assistants to support the 20%, but never replace it. So that's my review of Virtual Freedom by Chris Ducker. How to buy more time, how to become more productive and build your dream business. It's pretty straightforward outsourcing. Identify the tasks which are low value. If you can't delete or automate those tasks and outsource them, if you do outsource them, find a VA who is set up for outsourcing, somebody who is busy, has a lot of experience and can work in a just-in-time model with you. And once you do that, then focus on outsourcing time tasks rather than micromanaging time. Avoid the key mistakes and you will find 
outsourcing is a fantastic way to grow your business. Hopefully that was a useful review for you. My name is Graham Brown. This is Up School. I've been talking to you about books, which I believe will help you become a better entrepreneur. If you like these reviews, if you like me, you're passionate about books too, go and check out upschoolbookreviews.com slash course, where you'll find a course, a five book review course to help you become a better entrepreneur. Sorry, it's completely free. Top five book picks that I believe will help you get started, grow. And if you've read those books already, it's fantastic. Here's a second chance to get more out of those books. Go and check it out at upschoolbookreviews.com slash course.